Welcome to my channel. In today's lesson, you will learn in detail Newton's three laws of motion. Welcome to my channel. Today's topic is Newton's first law of motion. Newton's laws of motion are three laws that describe the relationship between motion of objects and forces acting on it. First law of motion is also known as law of inertia. Mathematical statements of second and third law are given here and you will learn about these later on. So today you will learn about Newton's first law of motion. As I have already told you that this law is also known as law of inertia. So Newton's first law of motion states that a body at rest or moving with a uniform speed in a straight line will not change its state of rest or of uniform motion unless it is acted upon by an unbalanced or external force. The law of inertia first formulated by Galileo and later generalized by Descartes is the starting point and the fundamental assumption of classical or Newtonian mechanics. Galileo deduced the law of inertia from his experiments with balls rolling down inclined planes. Our earth is spinning on its axis as well as orbiting the sun. The question arises in mind why we do not sense that motion. Galileo's law of inertia provides the answer. Since we are in motion together with earth and our natural tendency according to the law of inertia is to retain that motion. Therefore, earth appears or seems to be at rest. However, Newton sorted out that the motion of earth's surface is not uniform in a straight line but the effects of rotational motion are also taken into account. Note that bodies that are not pushed tend to come to rest due to the unbalanced forces acting on the object such as friction or air resistance. Now earth rotates on its axis, orbits around the sun, moves through the galaxy and the universe at the same speed for each motion. Hence, we do not notice that motion. We cannot feel or observe Earth's motion due to these constant speeds. Now, note that Earth rotates or spins around its axis at a speed of around 1000 miles or 1600 kilometers per hour and orbits around the Sun at a speed of around 67,000 miles, that is 107,000 kilometers per hour. If you are traveling in a car, there is another example, then that does not change speed or direction on a very smooth motion. Newton's second law of motion states that when a net external force sigma f acts on an object of mass m, the acceleration a that results is directly proportional to the net force and has a magnitude that is inversely proportional to the mass. The direction of the acceleration is the same as the direction of the net force or sigma f will be equal to m into a. SI unit of force is Newton which is equal to kilogram meter per second square. So one Newton will be the force that produces an acceleration of one meter per second square in a body of mass one kg. It must be noted that Newton is not a base unit but it is a derived unit because we derive it from the units of mass and acceleration. Now other units of force in CGS or British Imperial Measurement System are dyne and pound respectively. Now when using the second law to calculate the acceleration, it is necessary to determine the net force that acts on the object. In this determination, a free body diagram helps enormously. A free body diagram is a diagram that represents the object and the forces that act on it. Only the forces that act on the object appear in a free body diagram. Forces that the object exerts on the environment are not included. Now this picture illustrates the use of a free body diagram. Here two people are pushing a stalled car 
the mass of the car is 1850 kg one person applies a force of 275 newton to the car while the other applies a force of 395 newton towards right hand side both forces act in the same direction a third force of 560 newton also acts on the car but in a direction opposite to that in which the people are pushing this force arises because of friction and the extent to which the pavement opposes the motion of the tires now in order to find out the acceleration of the car in this case we use a diagram like this and first of all we calculate the net force that is exerted on the car now we know that since all these forces are acting along one direction so they can be added as collinear vectors to obtain the net force hence 275 plus 395 minus 560 will give us net force sigma f which will turn out to be plus 110 newton since mass is given here force is we have calculated already so using newton second law of motion a will be equal to sigma f over m so substituting the values of these two quantities sigma f and m the acceleration of the car comes out to be when you calculate it is 0.059 meter per second square the plus sign indicates that the acceleration points along the x axis in the same direction as the net force now here i will emphasize another property inertia how it is related with mass so inertia is actually property of a body by virtue of which it opposes any agency that attempts to put it in motion or if it is moving to change the magnitude or direction of its velocity so lighter masses have less inertia and more massive bodies have more inertia this is the reason that lighter masses are accelerated more and heavier bodies they are accelerated less if we use the same applied force as shown in this diagram so i have again shown this picture in a magnified view to emphasize that the magnitude of the acceleration is inversely proportional to the mass so newton second law of motion actually consists of two parts one is that acceleration is proportional to force and secondly acceleration is inversely proportional to the mass thank you for watching Welcome to my channel. Today's topic is Newton's third law. Under this topic, you will also learn characteristics of the two forces which make up a Newton's third law pair. Moreover, we will also solve a problem regarding Newton's third law of motion. In everyday situations, the examples of Newton's third law are like when you step on someone's toe. when a car hits a brick wall and comes to rest when a car slows down by applying the brakes and when you throw a ball upward into the air newton's third law of motion states when two bodies interact the forces they exert on each other are equal in magnitude and opposite in direction no explanation characteristics of the two forces which make up a newton's third law pair are these four number 1 they act on different objects they are equal in magnitude they are opposite in direction they are forces of the same type now you must understand what does it mean when we say that forces 
must be of the same type because there are so many types of forces when two objects may attract each other because of the gravity of their masses these forces are called gravitational forces electrical forces arise when two objects may attract or repel because of their electrical charges then contact forces which come into action when two objects may touch then tension forces which arise when two objects may be attached by a string and pull on each other and there are magnetic forces when two objects may attract or repel because of their magnetic fields now in this picture this person is standing on the earth surface the two gravitational forces are a newton's third law pair as are the two contact forces this is contact force which earth exerts on man this is contact force which man exerts on earth and this is gravitational force which man exerts on earth so it is in the upward direction whereas the force which earth exerts on man is in the downward direction so kindly do not be misled into thinking that the person's weight and the contact forces contact force of the floor are newton's third law pair although they are equal and opposite but they do not act on different objects and are not of the same type now we will solve a problem which will further clarify newton's third law of motion now in this picture this illustration shows third law applying to an astronaut which is drifting just outside a spacecraft and who pushes on the spacecraft with a force p now what happens according to newton's third law of motion the spacecraft pushes back on astronaut with a force minus p that is equal in magnitude but opposite in direction now we will solve a numerical which will clarify the accelerations produced by each of these forces so we have to calculate the acceleration produced by astronaut and acceleration produced by the spacecraft now mass of the spacecraft is denoted by ms and it is 11000 kg whereas mass of the astronaut is denoted by ma and it is 92 kg p is the force and its value is plus 36 newton and minus p is the reaction force which the spacecraft is exerting on the astronaut its magnitude will be same as p but its direction will be opposite according to newton's third law of motion although the action and reaction forces have the same magnitude they do not create acceleration of the same magnitude because the spacecraft and astronaut have different masses according to newton's second law the astronaut having a much smaller mass will experience a much larger acceleration when you will calculate you will find out that this acceleration is far more than the acceleration of the space craft why because the mass of the space craft is very very large so it will produce very less acceleration thank you for watching